How thin is too thin for a laptop? Well, Acer is going to tell us today with the Swift 7. It's their brand new LTE 14 inch laptop. And while it's super cool, I'm not really sure I could tell you to go buy it, but it is super cool. Stay tuned. Looking at the exterior of the Swift 7, it is an all metal design that lends itself to feeling quite dense. It's 2.6 pounds. It's not the lightest laptop out there, but for a 14 inch, it's pretty light as is. And it feels substantial, but evenly balanced. Uh, that's only betrayed by the fact that it's 8.9 millimeters thin, which is thinner than a lot of smartphones. It is ridiculous. Holding this device feels like you're holding a dinner plate um, or maybe something you throw in your oven. It's just kind of bizarre how than it is. Now, there are obviously gonna be some trade-offs there, including those ports. So you get two Type-C ports, 3.1 power delivery data. You can charge the device obviously through there. You also get a headphone jack. I should mention these are not Thunderbolt 3 ports uh, due to the chipset on this. It just doesn't support it. So that's a downside. And that's really it for the ports you get here. But you do get a dongle in the box which supports Ethernet, display out, and USB-A and stuff. So it's a nice little trade-off. But yeah, definitely dongle life here. Turn to the right-hand side, you get a single power button and a nano SIM slot. This is an always connected PC, which if you followed my video previously when I talked about that, that means it supports SIM out of the box as well as eSIM, which this does have. In fact, you get a gigabyte of free data for 30 days and you can sign up through software to keep renewing that on a day-to-day -day basis or a monthly basis. Turning to the top of the device, very clean. I just really like the design and look of this device. It's very smooth. Uh, it doesn't pick up fingerprints too badly. It does a little bit, so you have to wipe it down, but I've seen worse. I like the logo. You can see over here, this little bar, that is where part of the LTE antenna goes. Reception on this device is pretty good. Again, Surface Pro, in my opinion, sets the bar for reception and performance of LTE modems on PCs. This one's just okay. Being lower versus on top here, it's not gonna be as good, but that's why that line is there. Turning to the hinge, you can see Acer actually put Swift etched in black. It looks really cool and very subtle. And you have two LEDs there as well to tell you when the device is plugged in and powered on. Turn to the bottom, very clean design here. You do have the speaker grills on the bottom. Normally I'd complain about that, but these speakers are actually on the better end. I'd give them BB plus. Don't get a lot of bass and richness, but they're still pretty loud and they sound nice. They also resonate through the body, through the keyboard. That means if you block these, it actually doesn't muffle the speakers coming up through the keyboard. So uh, very good audio for what this device is. You should also notice there are no vents on this device. This is completely fanless and therefore silent. Opening the Swift 7 does require two hands, so no one-handed usage there. That's good and bad. The good news is, well, you get a very stiff hinge on this. So being so thin when this is in your lap and if you're on the train, it won't wobble as much as say HP Spectre does. And that's actually a pretty good trade-off. So there's always a pro and con to everything. All right, turning to the display, this is a 14 inch full HD IPS. Very good color accuracy and contrast. I really, really like this display. Now I know what you're saying, it's only Full HD, but it's a very sharp and good looking Full HD. In fact, I think most people would look at this and think it's a 2K screen, and that's pretty cool. That also helps with battery life. You're going to get a really good Full HD one, but it won't really impact your battery too much, say like a 2K or 4K. However, you are paying $1,700 for this device, so a Full HD to screen is a little bit weird, but you know, Let's talk a little bit about these bezels. So very thin on three sides, which look excellent. I know a lot of you are freaking out about this chin here at the bottom. A lot of you guys don't like that. Let me defend it a little bit though. First of all, you do have the web camera down here, which is kind of not a good thing actually. And two speakers, no Windows Hello IR, which is a bummer. But they do put the Wi-Fi and LTE tennis here, which is kind of necessary for this device. You have to put them somewhere and you're gonna do it there. You do get a plastic, contrast there for the reception there for those antennas. The other cool thing is because of this chin down here, it makes the display slightly taller. When you're using this in your lap, that screen sits up higher. It's actually really nice as it's more forward facing for your face. And it's just a better experience than having to keep your chin angled down. That's one benefit. The other one is because it's taller, the bottom half of this device has to match it. That means you get more room here for your wrist. A lot of laptops that are 16 by nine, which is what this is, cut off this section down here so your wrist kind of hang off 
off on the edge. And it's a little uncomfortable for typing. That's why people like Surface Laptop and Surface Book so much because it has a large area down here for your wrists. And this works here too. It's a little unusual for design, but in terms of actually using it, it's actually a great experience. Although you don't get a Windows Hello IR camera, you do get a fingerprint sensor on the left-hand side, which is weird. Again, this is where Acer always does things a little strange. I would have put it on the right-hand side, but it's on the left hand. It's also not a very good fingerprint sensor. I had a lot of misreads with it. You can kind of get used to it and train yourself to put your finger on there and get it to work, but it's not as good as I experienced. There's also another bug with this, which is when this laptop comes out of a deep sleep mode and it has to completely resume, that doesn't turn on at all. So you have to enter in a pin and then use fingerprint later. That's a bug, I believe that should be fixed. Kind of annoying, Acer can do better there. Now looking at the keyboard itself, on such a thin device, you'd expect this to be bad, but this is actually a very good keyboard. I'd give it a B, B plus. Keys are a little bit smaller than on most 14 inches, but the travel on this is actually pretty solid, and I really liked typing on it. They do do some weird things like the split backspace key. I didn't really have many errors with that, but you're going to split that with the delete key, and that can be a little confusing. You also have some pretty tiny arrow keys. There are obviously trade-offs here with such a small and thin device, but overall, it's a very good keyboard. It is also backlit, which is a change from last year's model. A lot of people complained about that, so it is now backlit. Looking at the trackpad, really nice size, pretty huge and very smooth. I like this trackpad. It uses precision drivers as well. So that gets a thumbs up for me. The weird thing is it doesn't click. Now, some people have lamented that. And to be honest, when I first used this device, I was weirded out by the fact it doesn't click or have right and left zones on it. And I had to retrain myself to do two finger taps on links to open up things like right click on the menu. Having said that, I quickly got used to this. And in fact, I kind of prefer tapping now instead of clicking on trackpads, even on other devices besides this one. I wouldn't consider it a negative, but I will point it out as something to consider because it is different. The reason they didn't put a clicking mechanism in here is it's just too thin. The battery and other components are underneath it. So they had to sacrifice it. Having said that, I'm actually pretty happy with this trackpad. And another change from last year's model is this is now a full touchscreen, so works very well. No pen support, of course, but for those of you who want a touchscreen on your device, well, Acer delivered this year for you. Now, I mentioned earlier, this is a fanless design, which is pretty awesome for such a thin laptop, but that's only betrayed by the fact it's running a Core i7 processor. I put that in quotes because it's a 7Y75 that came out in late 2016. It is Kibbe Lake dual core for threads. It's a really nice processor. It idles at 1.3 gigahertz, which is very good for battery life, but it can turbo up to 3.6 gigahertz, which is what makes it a core i7. And it's actually very good performance. The trade-off is it only runs at four and a half watt TDP, Usually these things run that 15 watt. That means while it can hit 3.6 gigahertz, it can't maintain it for a long duration. The end result here is that it runs apps very quickly. So when it launches them, it's very snappy. The OS is very quick and everything about it feels very fast. But if you wanna do some heavy crunching with this processor, well, after five to 10 minutes, it will throttle a bit. That's just the trade-off for a fanless design. Now for RAM, you're going to get eight gigabytes of DDR3, which is okay. Now let's turn to storage. You get 256 gigabytes. That is PCIe NVMe. That's an improvement over last year's SATA model. And you get very good read and write speeds. We're talking 1600 and 800 megabits per second, which is very respectable for this device. Now in the world's thinnest laptop combined with a Core i7, you probably expect me to tell you it gets really terrible battery life. After all, how else can such a thin device with a nice processor achieve anything less? Well, it actually gets very good battery life. I'm talking eight to nine hours of real world usage, which impressed me. I was not going to this device expecting to get very good battery life. I expect maybe five to six hours, but no, it actually lasts all day. And you do get a USB type C charger out of the box, which helps with fast charging as well. So I give this actually a thumbs up for everything they're trying to achieve. That's what you get though for using a full HD display and a Y series processor combined with a pretty good sized battery. All right, let's bring it all in. I can't really say I recommend you buying this device. It's super expensive and it doesn't do everything that a cheaper laptop can do. Having said that, it's super cool. I really enjoy using it. Typing on it was great. It's got a really good display. That fingerprint reader is not very good, but it kind of works most of the time. I like the trackpad a lot. Audio is better than I thought too. Performance is good. It gets all day battery life. 
There's a lot about this device I really like, but it's not for everybody. This is for the person who wants to show off. It's the guy who gets a sports car. It's not very practical. It goes really fast, but you're still gonna just drive on a public road, right? That's what this device is, and that's okay. I think we should allow companies to sort of push boundaries and create these devices and give them a thumbs up for at least trying. I've been kind of harsh on Acer in the past, but I really like a lot of the changes they did this year with this device. I think it's super impressive. If you're looking for an always connected PC, well, this one actually performs very well. It's super expensive, but some of you guys have money and want to get something that really stands out from the crowd. Well, go use this in a coffee shop. I'm sure you'll turn a lot of heads. So there's my review of the Acer Swift 7. Now, if you want more information about this device, make sure you go to that description below. We'll have a couple links for you. If you liked this video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Take care, everybody.